Well, folks, MAGA has cooked up yet another reason why you and I shouldn't like Tim Walls, and this one is funnier than ever. You know, the more they try to dig into this guy, the more I end up loving him. First, they came after his military record, tried to accuse him of stolen valor, and people like us were sitting back going, well, wait a minute, aren't you the guys whose front runner is Captain Bone Spurs? You know, Donald Trump didn't go serve his country when it was his time to do so, and since then has been the most disrespectful president we've ever had towards our military veterans. Uh, so it's not the flex you think it is to try to question why someone would end their 24-year career in the military so they could run for Congress. And then they tried to go after the whole dog controversy. We had fun with that one here on the channel where they tried to say that he said Scout was in the picture and it wasn't really Scout and that was supposed to be controversial. And now they say that the reason why we shouldn't like Tim Walls is because he's got a brother named Jeff who disagrees with his political ideology. Yeah, he's got a family member who doesn't like what he stands for, so we should all turn against him. Do they not realize that all of us blue dots here in the South, and all over the country for that matter, do they not realize that all of us blue dots have Trump supporters in our family? We have friends who are Trump supporters. This is not a flex at all. If anything, it just makes Tim Walls even more relatable. And what I would like to point out is they've said that Jeff Walls totally disagrees with his brother Tim's political ideology and that he donated to Trump's campaign back in 2016. But what I would point out is that Trump's family, like Mary Trump and his nephew Fred Trump, they've tried to point out the kind of person Donald Trump truly is behind closed doors. It's not really about political ideology as much as it is, hey, this is the kind of person this guy really is. He's duping you. This guy is power hungry. He's he's an egomaniac. That's the kind of things they're saying. And I want to go back and play this clip from Fred Trump because if they want to act like that this is going to disqualify Tim Walls or this could be a setback for Kamala Harris, I saw one headline that said that, oh, this is a setback. No, it's not. Um, it's just going to make us love Tim Walls more. This to me, this clip from Fred Trump should absolutely be a setback for Donald Trump, but you'll never hear the mainstream media say that. Take a look uncle was elected president, Fred Trump says he saw an opportunity to advocate for the disabled. I was in the Oval Office 12 times, about. And that was our mission, to advocate for people with complex disabilities. It culminated in May of 2020 in the Oval Office. Donald was there, and, and he was very gracious. Several other uh, folks were there, including the group that we brought down. We dispersed. I was asked to go back and see Donald. He greeted me with his familiar, hey, pal, how's it going? We sat down for a bit. And he just came out with these people, all the expenses. They should just die. <laughs> He's talking about human beings who have complex issues. And the first thing he could say was they should just die. Fred claims this wasn't isolated, describing a phone call to alert his uncle the medical fund set up by the family for his son William was running low, a fund he says the former president consistently replenished. A couple of years ago, I said, I called him. I said, Donald, the fund's running out. And without hesitation, he said, your son doesn't recognize you. Let him die and move to Florida. <laughs> Were you surprised? <laughs> It's a great question. I, my response was, no, Donald, he does recognize me. And said, well, well thanks, <laughs> and, and, and hung up. Was I surprised? I, I don't think you could hear something like that and not be surprised. Um, but that is what he has become. Um, it, it's sad. So you could show that clip right there to any Trump supporter and they would just accuse Fred Trump of trying to sell a book. I've heard him do it. Oh man, he's just trying to get famous. Hey, he's just trying to bash his uncle to get rich and famous. He's just trying to grift people. And meanwhile, these are the same people who are sitting back paying $99 for a digital trading card. They're sitting back paying money for Bibles and sneakers and t-shirts with him and his mugshot on it. And the caption says, never surrender. And he's surrendering in the pic. And these are the people who sits back and applauds Donald Trump whenever he says something cruel and over the top. How many times have I played clips for you guys and I've said, guys, pay attention. Look at the people standing behind him laughing. Listen to the people laughing. Listen to the people applauding his cruelty. They stand back and they laugh and they applaud his cruelty. And then when we bring receipts like that and show them what his own nephew had to say about him, they could never entertain the idea that Trump would ever say those things, yet they pay to go see him 
say those kind of things. There's no way that it makes sense. Meanwhile, all MAGA can come up with is, hey, look, Tim Walls has a brother that disagrees with him politically. Do they not realize that every one of us blue dots here all across the country experiences the same thing every day? I have Trump supporters in my family. I have cousins who support Trump that I haven't heard from or seen in years, and a lot of them deleted me off Facebook a long time ago. So I live around them all the time. I'm surrounded by people who support Trump. So it's not a flex to say, oh, Tim Walsh has a brother that disagrees with him politically or has a brother that buys into conspiracy theories or has a brother that donated to, to Trump. We all have that. So it just makes him more relatable because we look at him and go, well, <laughs> that's just another reason to like him. He's got a brother that you know disagrees with him. And now that brother may go out there and jump on the Trump train and try to you know, run Tim's name in the ground. But there's a big difference between someone's family member having a difference of opinion or a different political ideology and then someone else's family coming out and saying, this is the kind of person that he is behind closed doors. This is the kind of cruel stuff he says behind closed doors. This is the kind of narcissistic prick that this guy really is. We have heard so much from Murray Trump over the years, and MAGA will just always write it off. They'll write it off like it's nothing in the world, nothing for any of us to get bent out of shape over. And meanwhile, they're going to be all bent out of shape over this. And get ready, folks. Get ready for them to flex every time they see you. Your crazy Fox News watching uncle is going to start sending you the clips. Oh, look at Tim Walls' brother. He don't like him. He don't. Yeah, what do you think about that? And when they do that, just send them the Fred Trump clip. Send them Mary Trump's book and say, hey, you know, what about this? And watch how fast they will dig in their heels and defend Donald Trump. They're going to defend him right to the end. And until MAGA can actually bring some real credible receipts on Tim Wall, something better than he missed spoke or that he posted about a dog and it was the wrong dog in the picture, they're going to have to do a lot better. You know, I saw a meme that was hilarious. It said, um, it said, Tim, it said, Tim Walls said that, uh, it was time to go and told his kids it was time to go and then stood at the end of the driveway for over an hour before he actually left. <laughs> I could so see MAGA coming up with that kind of conspiracy. And when I read that, I thought to myself, I thought my dad did me that way growing up all the time, uh, not to get sidetracked, but funny story when I was growing up, um, my dad would do that. He would look at me, me and my cousin would be playing basketball in the yard. And my dad would say, come on, it's time to go. Well, I'd go get in the truck with him and sit down. And then my uncle would stand at the window and they would talk for another hour. <laughs> so me and my cousin realized real quick, hey, let's just keep playing ball till your dad's got the truck in reverse. <laughs> but this is the kind of crazy stuff they're cooking up to try to turn us against Tim Walls, America's dad, the most likable dude that's came along in so many years. I mean, just a lovable Midwestern dude, just your everyday typical, you know, dad. Uh, the kind of guy that you would like to sit down and have a beer with, the kind of guy that you would like to go out and eat with. Can you imagine going to a to a comedy show with someone like Tim Walls? Can you imagine going to a football game? Can you imagine just hanging out with him? He's one of the most relatable, likable people that's came along in years, and now we learn that he's got a crazy brother. Well, <laughs> what's new? We've we've all got that. We we all have that. So, uh, Mega, if you're gonna come up with a reason for us to dislike uh, Tim Walls, you're going to have to do a much better job than this.